Welcome to the Medical Device School. So today the session is with Eric Volbrecht and we will talk specifically about uh, economic operator. And the specific question is, who are the economic operators and how to identify them? Because there were a lot of questions that were sent to me about, is this an economic operator? Should I consider it as an economic operator? So uh, I have Eric with me to help me to understand uh, who should I consider as an economic operator for my medical devices. So Eric, do you have an, um, an advice for people to understand who are the economic operators uh, in the, within the MDR and IVDR? Uh, yeah, for sure, uh, Monir. And, and it all starts, I think, with uh, looking into the, uh, the definitions of the MDR, because the MDR helpfully uh, uh, defines who is an economic operator. Actually, uh, I've got my MDR right here. <laughs> okay. And uh, um, if you look in, uh, in, in Article 2, Section 35, it says economic operator. So that's first, it's a manufacturer. Okay. Then uh, an authorized representative, that's also an economic operator. Then an importer, okay. uh, a distributor. And then there's also another party mentioned that people often forget. Yeah. The person referred to in Article 22, Section 1 and 3. Okay. So that is what I always call the systems integrator and the procedure pack sterilizer. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got we've got the uh, we've got the systems and procedure packs provision that we already had under the MDD, but this this party, uh, the party that uh, makes the package, but also the party that sterilizes the procedure pack, they are also considered economic operators. So if I have my product that uh, I'm manufacturing my product, I send that to a company that is just doing the packaging with all the information inside, then it is considered also as an economic operator. Uh, no, not necessarily, because, okay. uh, because the way the economic operator system works is that an economic operator makes available or ah, yeah. uh, places on the market. And when you have a, a company that provides a service for you, like, uh, for example, uh, storage, uh, packaging, uh, repackaging, uh, that kind of thing, that is, uh, that is normally not an economic operator unless you are dealing with a situation uh, where somebody in the supply chain is repackaging, but then they are doing it for their own purposes and not for you as a service provider. That's the kind of situation that's regulated in Article 16. But normally, a service provider is never an economic operator. Also, there you've got uh, there there is an exemption, uh, or I should say an exception. Um, that's the case where you are dealing with a fulfillment services provider that does more than just moving boxes. And there's, uh, um, if you want to understand uh, what is an economic operator, the blue guide uh, that, that many people will be uh, familiar with would be, would be good to reference also for this, uh, for this uh, uh, little training. The blue guide has quite an elaborate discussion on who's an economic operator. And in the distributor section, it also says if you have a, a service provider that also does particular additional actions that go beyond mere moving of boxes, then they can also be considered a distributor. And that was also confirmed in the uh, new market surveillance regulation, uh, regulation uh, uh, 1020 slash 2019 that came out half last year uh, that also applies to medical devices and IVDs. Okay, so I will I will try to reference the blue guide and and this uh, this re this regulation here on the show notes. So, um, okay, now we, now it's it's clear. So um, one question also regarding that. So I have some company that were asking me. I am a class one uh, device company. So um, do I need an economic operator because I'm self certified? So do I need an economic operator? Yeah, the answer is uh, yes, uh, and that's that's I think also one of the big things for class one manufacturers is that uh, under the MDR, uh, uh, there's there's a lot that class one manufacturers need to do extra. They need, to, for example, they they are subject to the complete uh, scope of Article Ten of the MDR, which is the core article that contains all the obligations. 
So that means that they are uh, they uh, they are subject to uh, economic oper uh, operator regulation, but also uh, a full quality system, for example, which is something that I find that my class one clients find really difficult to understand, because they come from an Annex Seven, well, almost no quality system under the MDD, and then they need to go to uh, to uh, uh, an ISO uh, thirteen eighty. 2016 plus quality system which is uh, yeah it's, it's a big step yeah so um so yeah so those those classical manufacturers have a lot of things to do so uh, for example if they have to hire uh, an economic operator like an importer or or like if they are outside of the of europe or a distributor um they still have to uh, so to have a, a contract with them so an agreement that they can they have to sign and that they have to confirm that they are the economic the, this company is the economic operator of, of this manufacturer well yes and no because uh, this is also something that companies often think that they can appoint uh, an economic operator but that's not the way it works. Uh, uh, there's only one economic operator that you can mandate to be an economic operator, and that's the authorized representative, because the authorized representative, you give a mandate. Yeah. But for the, uh, for the economic operators of the, uh, the, the importer, the distributor, and the uh, systems integrator slash procedure pack compiler, those guys are all defined by the fact that they make medical devices available or they place them on the market. And regardless of whether of what you put in the contract, if these are the facts, then the law will say, even if you would, for example, in, 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 a, in a contract with your importer, you would say, we agree that you are not an importer, but the, uh, import, but the entity behaves as an importer in the definition of the MDR anyway, then they are still an importer. So um, is it uh, then is it the problem of the manufacturer that they are really identified or it's the authorities that have to, to make that clear? So do they have something to do with their distributor or importer or it's just... Uh, no, not, necessar that? Not, not, not necessarily because, uh, because under the MDR, each economic operator has their own autonomous uh, uh, obligations and responsibilities and these responsibilities apply towards the competent authorities. If they don't meet these obligations, they can be enforced against. But what is new, I think, about the economic operator regime is that there are so many links that the, laws, that the law makes between the different economic operators. For example, if there's a serious risk with a non-compliant medical device, the distributor needs to inform the authorized representative, the manufacturer, and the competent authorities. And for that, it is, of course, very convenient that you have, an, uh, have a contract with a distributor so the distributor knows who to inform about something and what they will tell you uh, uh, and things like that. Uh, the, the distributor, for example, needs to have a register of complaints that he must give um, access to for the manufacturer. So it's nice that you have a contract that governs how the access to the register of complaints will work, for example. Okay, so okay, so I think now we have really a well understanding of who are the economic operators and how to identify them. So thank you for that, Eric, and uh, let's see for the next episode. Don't forget the bonus material. Yeah, uh, I, will, I will put that on the show notes. Also, yeah, so for people to download uh, the, the, the side deck. Okay, mm -hmm. so thank you, Eric, and have a nice day. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.